Michelle Steenbeek, and here with me today is Dr. Ken Milne. We both are working with the South Huron Hospital, and Dr. Ken is the Chief of Staff. Correct. I am the health promoter here, and in my work I see a lot of people that are interested in some of the myths that are surrounding the flu shot. And as we approach flu season, it seems like it's really important to drive home something that we need to know and something that we need to really understand the truth about. So, happy to have you here today. Um, Michelle, I'm glad you asked me to come on the, and talk to you about this and that we can use the video to try to get the message out about the flu shots. Because mm -hmm. like you said, a lot of people come in and have questions and really I think their questions are myths. Definitely. Myths about the flu shot, mm -hmm. not facts about it. So right. if you and I today can do a little myth busting. Sounds good to me. Break up some myths, get people the true information. And I think when people have the true information, they'll make the right choice for mm -hmm. their health, mm -hmm. for the health of their loved ones, whether it be their mother or father that they're taking care of that's elderly, right. or whether it's for their young children. We all want to protect ourselves mm -hmm. and our family and our community against a preventable illness. That's great. Influenza. So why don't we get started? You throw a, um, a question or a concern that you okay. get and I'll think of my best myth-busting answer. Give your expert opinion. Well, myth-busting answer. Oh, okay. And I'll base it on the evidence, All okay? Right. Yes. So let's do it that way. Sounds good. Here we go. Okay, so one of the most common reasons that I hear that people aren't wanting to get their flu shot is that they think they can get the flu from it. Now, what do you think? Do you think it's possible if they got the flu shot that they can get sick within a week? I hear that all the time, and they, they just don't think it's worth it. So what do you think, Dr. Milne? So the main point there, I think, is you're, you get the concern mm -hmm. that they could get the flu from, from the, the shot. flu shot. Right. Is that, is that what you're getting that's, at, really? That's what I'm getting from okay. people, yeah. Because I hear that, too. Oh, don't give me that flu shot. You might give me mm -hmm. the flu. It's impossible. It is impossible. You cannot get influenza really? from the flu shot. There is no influenza. There's no full virus, because mm -hmm. that's what influenza is, mm -hmm. in the flu shot. So mm -hmm. if I'm not injecting you with flu, how then could you get, get it. the flu? Mm -hmm. Now now it's different. The nasal spray is different, okay? So the nasal spray is different. Okay. That's a different type of immunization. There is a flu Nas a flu vaccine that's a nasal spray. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about here is the flu shot. Can I get the flu from the current flu shot? And the answer is no. Myth. You Definitely. cannot get the flu from the flu shot. There is no influenza in it. They take the virus, they break it down, and mm -hmm. they've got part of the shell. Part of the shell. So you need the whole thing, the whole thing, to get, to get the, sick. To get sick. To, to, right. to, to have a, uh, the live bug mm -hmm. in you. They've just got part of the shell. And that is what gets injected into you. And that's what your immune system recognizes as, hey, that looks like the flu. Mm -hmm. And so if you ever came across the flu, you have a memory of, hey, I know you. You're bad news. You're the flu. And you rally your immune system and you fight the flu off. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. So can you get the flu from the flu shot? Big myth, busted. Definitely a no. Cannot. All right. Thanks very much. What do you say to people that say that they got the flu shot last year and they still got sick? Oy. If I, the number of times I've heard that, oh my goodness, my friend got the flu shot last year. They have never been so sick. And they Dr. say it Mil doesn't work. Oh, well, because it they got really, really sick, mm -hmm. you know, so it, not that it didn't work, but it made them sick, right? And that's the difference between cause and effect, so cause and effect, so causation and association. So causation and association. The difference between causation is if I do something and it causes something. Association is, guess what happens to people in October and November? They get sick. They get sick. The weather changes, all the kids go back to school, all the runny yes, noses, the yes. bugs start changing around. But if they are one of the people, because we do a big immunization program, mm -hmm. if they're one of the people that got the flu shot the day before, and then the next day they come down with an illness, mm -hmm. you know, a runny nose, a cough, cold, flu-like illness. They're going to blame it on the shot. Of course, and that's human nature. Right. But we don't blame it, you know, all those people who had 
chicken for dinner the night before. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that had chicken for dinner the night before. And some of them will have gotten sick the next day. But because they had chicken for dinner did not cause them to get the flu right. the next day. So just because they had the flu shot at one of the Grand Bend clinics mm -hmm. the day before doesn't mean the next day when they got ill it had anything to do with the flu shot. This is a myth. It is busted. It's not cause and effect. It's cause. It, it, it's association. And just like one of the other myths that we mentioned, you cannot get sick from getting the flu shot. Great. Thanks very much for clearing that up for me. Okay. Well, it's one of the big ones, right? Yes, definitely. What about those people that say that they didn't get the flu shot last year and they never got sick? Why should I tell those people to get a flu shot? I tell them, I'm so happy you didn't get sick last year because you probably didn't end up in the emergency department then. And I'm happy <laughs> when people. Well, I'm happy when people don't get sick. Mm -hmm. Like that's good news, right? Right. You know they're not sick, but just because you didn't get sick last year and didn't have the flu shot doesn't mean you shouldn't get the flu shot this year. Mm -hmm. I drove to work today. I was not in a car accident. I was not in a car accident today mm -hmm. on the way to work. I wasn't in one yesterday either. I'm happy to say I haven't been in a car accident in a very long time. Um, but I wore my seatbelt, you know, so just yeah. because maybe the year before that person wasn't exposed to influenza. Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets it every year and so they didn't get exposed to it. So just because you drove to work today and weren't in a car accident, I think most people would say, you know what, I think I still should probably wear my seatbelt. Not that it's the law, right. I mean, that's, that's another reason, but it saves lives. And we know, we doctors, researchers, we know that if you get the flu shot, you're much less likely to get the flu. If you get the flu, it's less serious. And if you get a really serious case of the flu and you've had the flu shot, you're less likely to die. And that so makes if you're sense. well, and so if you're in a car accident mm -hmm. and you're wearing a seatbelt, it's not a guarantee you're not going to be hurt. Right. But it's way better to have that seatbelt on. Definitely. and be injected from the car. Mm -hmm. So I buckle up and I encourage everybody else this fall to buckle up and get the flu shot. That is a myth. Just because you didn't get the flu last year doesn't mean you don't need the flu shot this year. That's great. Thank you for putting it in those terms for us. One of the things I hear most from people in my age group is that people... Excuse me? My, my age I group? have to pull the age card She's here. She's throwing out the... Yes, she is much younger than Thank me. you for pointing that out. I'm young and healthy. Mm -hmm. Why would I get the flu shot? It's just for the elderly. I do hear that, you know, particularly from young people mm -hmm. because they think, oh, the flu shot, oh, if you're over 65, you should get it. Right. But if you're young and healthy like yourself, I, why get the I flu shot? I should be able to fight it off, right? So we're talking about primary prevention. Primary prevention is preventing disease and illness before it happens. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier to prevent disease and illness before it happens than to treat someone once they're sick. Mm -hmm. So it's the difference between, yes, you get the flu shot, and if you get exposed to the flu, you're protected, right? Right. You have protection, right? If you get sick, and then we have to give you medication, support, and all that stuff, it's much harder to treat you. Mm -hmm. Young people have a more vigorous immune system right. and respond to the flu shot better and actually develop more antibodies. So, okay. it's, so it's good in a way. Mm -hmm. Like So people over the age of 65 over the age of 65 don't have as vigorous of an immune system. Mm -hmm. So you can think of it as uh, from two perspectives. One perspective is you're going to respond better to the flu shot. In other words, you're going to make more antibodies and you're going to be better protected. That's an interesting way to put it. I never thought of it that way. But there are cases of young people dying and there was news reports in the last week really? of an unfortunate teenage boy who died of influenza. This is not local, but there was cases, a case and there are cases every year it seems mm -hmm. of young people dying so it is possible well and all it takes is a shot but thinking beyond yourself mm -hmm. thinking beyond yourself as a young healthy person do you have a mother and a father do you have a grandparent yes I do that yes. you care about mm -hmm. if you're immunized and you've got a good immune system what you're doing is yes there's some benefit but it's unlikely you're gonna get super sick right right but not so much for your mom and dad or grandparents. Or my grandpa, yeah. And so you're preventing 
bringing anything to them mm -hmm. because the flu shot doesn't work as well as that mm -hmm. in, in, in somebody over the age of 65. So by doing that, by getting your flu shot... You're preventing them from getting it. You're preventing them from getting it because you don't have it. Right. If you get it, you might have a mild illness, but if you bring it home to them, your grandpa it might be have catastrophic. a well, life-threatening, mm -hmm. deadly. So, you know, if you're a young person and you think, yeah, I don't really, you know, need it for myself, Mm -hmm. Be a bit altruistic and get it for someone else, in particular, someone you love and care about that might not have as good immune system as you do. That's great. Thank you very much for pointing that out. One of the other common reasons that I hear for not getting the flu shot is that flu shots aren't very effective anyway. I've heard they only protect you about half the time. So what is the benefit of getting the flu shot? Some immunizations are better than others. Mm -hmm. The flu shot, it's good. But it's not perfect. But how many things in life are perfect and come with a guarantee? Not too many. <laughs> no. There are some immunizations that can give you 95, 96, close to 99% effective. Wow. Really good. Mm -hmm. The flu shot isn't one of those. But it's pretty good. The younger you are, and you know, you're a younger person, mm -hmm. your immune system is better. And so it's really pretty effective in younger people. As you get older, or the very young, your immune system isn't as um, robust. Okay. And so you don't develop as many antibodies, mm -hmm. so it doesn't work as well. So when you get that 50% or something like that, I think you're looking at all comers, whereas the young people would have quite a high, good, vigorous response, young, healthy people. Hmm. But seniors and the very young don't have as good immune response, and so they're 50-50. But I think I've said it before, one of the other myths is, I'd rather have my seatbelt on. I'd rather have a 50-50 chance of not dying than a 100% chance of dying. Right. You know, so, so even though it's not as effective, mm -hmm. again, there's two ways you could look at it. Um, it's not as effective in a senior, but if a younger person like yourself gives it, you're contributing to what we call herd immunity. So there's less flu out there in the community to be bouncing around from person to person. Okay. So. I think that almost makes it more important that everybody get the flu shot, unless they're allergic to it or something. Mm -hmm. They're allergic to one of the components, they're allergic to eggs. Everybody, if they could get the flu shot, because it's not 100% effective, it's better to get 100% of the people. Mm -hmm. That makes sense too, it's right? another way of looking at it. Yeah. So I think that's a bit of a myth, oh well it only works 50% of the time, uh, you know, busted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not perfect. Few things in life are, there's no guarantee, but I'd rather be protected. Definitely. I think it's much better than the alternative, that's for sure. I got my flu shot last year. Good Yay! Good leadership. So if I got it last year, just like I got all my different immunizations, why would I need it to get it again this year? The flu shot is changed typically from year to year. There's three types of flus included, three strains of flu included okay. in each flu shot. So it's not just one flu you're getting protected against. Mm -hmm. You get it three for one. Wow. So three different strains. That's for, like a value pack. For, well, for one jab, right? Yeah. Three for one. And with the flu shot, if you got it last year, the flu strains change. That's what makes them so tricky. And that's why it doesn't work 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. And That makes sense. Researchers and... Uh, vaccine specialists and manufacturers have to look at what's coming around the globe actually. They look at Australia and say what's coming this way because it's winter in Australia when it's spring here, so they start summer there. here, and so they look at that and say what's going to be coming around the globe and they make a best educated guess with the best evidence and say we're going to put these three strains in this year. We hope it's one of the three strains that's the big outbreak. Mm -hmm. And so because you had it last year, it may be a different strain that's in the flu shot this year. And the immuni even actually, you know, even in this flu season, from the start of the flu mm -hmm. to the end of the flu season locally, new ones can develop. The flu changes. Wow. That's how tricky it is. So at the start of the season, when they look at what kind of flu it is, mm -hmm. it can mutate to a slightly different type of flu by the end of the flu season. So that why that that's why each year it's important that each year you get updated and get a new flu shot because it'll be the best 
I don't want to say guess because it's not guess. These are really smart people looking out <laughs> Let's for hope you. they're not guessing. No, well, I don't know. Pick the uh, <laughs> Sydney flu. No, they're really looking at the data and trying to decide what's the best uh, of the strains to include in the flu shot this year to protect you. So you need one every year until they come up with some way of beginning, getting a universal flu shot mm -hmm. that's effective against all flus. But those bugs are tricky. They're sneaky. They They're sneaky. They so you got you, it. It's a constant sort of give and go. And so every year, get your flu shot, a three in one. It's a myth that you, if you got it last year, you don't need it this year. There you go, folks. Just one more reason to get your flu shot this year. Another one I hear is that I hate needles. I just want to stay <laughs> away from them. I don't want to have anything to do with them, so I'm not getting the flu shot. What do you think about that? I mean, there are some people that have quite a vigorous response to, like, needles going, <gasps> thunk, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like, it's not like, worth it. Yeah. Like, well, well, I mean, they faint at the sight of needles, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's a true reaction, you know, like, it's quite a vigorous reaction. But for those people, you know, there is an answer. Uh, really? Yeah. Now, in specific situations, you don't have to get a needle. Okay. You can actually get a nasal spray. They make a nasal spray. So just talk to your doctor. Mm -hmm. Not everybody qualifies for the nasal spray. There are certain things because it's a, a different type of preparation. And, you know, you have some concerns about pregnant women and people over the age of 55. And so there are, okay. there are specific people that it does, um, it is an option for. And it's the young healthy that it's most likely the option for unless mm -hmm. you're pregnant and stuff. But just talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor because these recommendations change. But if it's the needle that's keeping you from getting the flu shot, just say, hey, am I one of those people that I can just get the spray up my nose? Mm -hmm. You know, would that work? And just talk to your doctor. Okay, so it's a myth. You don't need to get a needle. You don't need to get the jab mm -hmm. to get the flu shot to get protected against the flu. There is a, another option for some people. That's nice, and it's really good to know that there is an alternative. I've also had a lot of people tell me that the flu shot has many bad side effects. Now, if those people are worried about Ow. getting the... Hey! Hey! Ow. Hey! Hey! How bad was that? Ow! I've heard people complaining that they can get autism, all those concerns that you hear about immunizations in general, so mm -hmm. can you just address those people and what are the some of the worst things that could happen with getting the flu shot and how do the benefits outweigh, outweigh the risks? So a detailed list of all the side effects can always be printed out. From they the, can scare people. Yeah, no, and you get these printouts from the drugstore, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. The typical reaction to a flu shot, and I'm using the reaction is, I broke your skin with a needle. Ow! My arm will hurt for like three days, I though. have a sore arm. So yes, you can get a sore arm. But a sore arm is better than a week in the hospital. I think so, better too. Better than a trip to the ICU. Mm -hmm. Better than a week off work. So yes, you, you, you know, you can get a sore arm. Mm -hmm. um, if you're allergic to any component of the immunization, in particular um, uh, eggs. Okay. So there is an egg base to it. Mm -hmm. They're incubated in eggs. So if you have an egg allergy, you should not get the flu shot. Good okay? to know. Um, there was a, a concern back in the 1970s. This is for our older audience. There was a president named Gerald Ford, I think. Well, was it Ford or Nixon? Actually, now I'm now I'm now, you're, now, now I'm like, you're. oh no. <laughs> um, they had a swine flu back in the 70s, mm -hmm. and they did this mass immunization, and there was an outbreak of a rare neurologic condition called, pardon my French, Guillain-Barré, Guillain-Barré syndrome, and it's a very serious medical condition. So that was always written into the, oh my goodness, if you get the flu shot, there is a risk of Guillain-Barré and they found out that it was just an association, okay. not cause and effect. There just happened to be a pocket of Guillain-Barre outbreaks, mm -hmm. which there are from time to time, and it happened during a mass immunization, during the swine flu in the 1970s. It just happened to coincide. It just happened with it. to coincide, but it wasn't cause and effect. It was an association that that happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup, oh my goodness, a miracle, Right? They would say, oh, well, it's because the Leafs won the cup that people got Guillain Barre. Because it happened at the same time. Now, the last time they won was 1967, so we don't have to worry, don't about, have to that. worry about that. I think there's more likely to be an outbreak of Guillain Barre <laughs> than there is that the Leafs will You're win a Stanley Cup. on that now. Well, no, I feel pretty comfortable about that because <laughs> I don't believe that they're going to have a hockey season this year. So I, I'm pretty safe pretty saying pretty I don't think they're going to win the cup this okay. year because okay. I don't think there's going to be a season this year. You're probably pretty safe on go that Go Leafs, one. go. But 
you know, you know, like so. That's the cause and effect. Just mm -hmm. because something happened at the same time doesn't mean the one. There are two independent things. You mentioned one other thing about autism and stuff like that. Autism has never been linked with flu shots. Autism had been linked to other immunizations, in particular the MMR. MMR that was totally debunked. It's a myth. The doctor who did that lost his license. The doctor who did that and published his work. That paper was pulled because of fraud. There was wow. fraud in the study. The fraud caused the, I believe it was the Lancet, and mm -hmm. it was Dr. Wakefield. My understanding is that the, the Lancet pulled the paper and he lost his medical license. Wow. So, so, but we're not talking about MMR, we're not no. talking about autism. It's a serious medical condition. There's never been an association between the flu shot and autism. It's really reassuring to hear that. I give my children, well not personally, but I have my children immunized and I do mm -hmm. not have any concerns about autism and them getting the flu shot. Great. And I love them. I love all three of them. <laughs> and and I wouldn't do it to my children and put my children at risk if I thought there that's was a risk the best, for autism. That's one of the so, best testimonies. But, 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 that's, but that's, that's a dad comment. That's mm -hmm. a dad comment, but I know the medical research backs that up. Definitely. So yet another myth we have busted here. Yes, busting. So I'm at the time of my life that I have a lot of friends with young kids and people that are having babies, and now I'm hearing that pregnant women shouldn't be vaccinated. Is this true or is this another myth? Are we revealing something on camera here? You never know. No, um, so pregnancy. So pregnant women absolutely can get immunized. Pregnant women can absolutely get the flu shot. Definitely. Definitely get the flu shot. And in fact, when the H1N1 outbreak came out, mm -hmm. it, pregnant women were one of the most um, at-risk populations and we were trying to reach them and immunize them. They were in the high-risk immunize them first group. Mm -hmm. They were people put in the front of the line to get immunized. So not the, oh my goodness, don't immunize them. They were put in the front of the line. Really? The only concern is with that nasal spray. There is a nasal spray, a nasal vaccine, a nasal okay. preparation that can be used as an alternative to the actual owl. To the poke? And um, it should not be used in pregnant women. Okay. All right, but I, that's I, because it's different. It's altogether. a different preparation. It's a live vaccine. Mm -hmm. It's a live vaccine. Okay, that so makes sense. So you don't give live vaccines mm -hmm. to pregnant women. Live vaccines, active bug. You don't want to give an active bug to someone who's pregnant. Okay. All right. So that that goes for all of our immunizations. Mm -hmm. But the non-live vaccines are all perfectly safe, and pregnant women should be immunized. I've also heard that it can pass that immunization on to the child too when it's mm -hmm. born. Yep. So yet another reason if you're looking to protect your child. That protect way. yourself and yep. your unborn child. Definitely. Myth? Myth. Busted. Busted. Okay, one more thing that I hear about flu shots is that over time if I get the flu shot my immune system is going to be weakened if I'm just relying on that flu shot rather than having that immunization occur naturally. What do you say to that Dr. Mill? You mean so like getting the natural or the wild strain of mm -hmm. the food? Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather fight it off naturally and build up my own immunity than system, somebody yeah. give me a shot. I understand. So that's, that's a, um, a point that's often made, mm -hmm. but it's a myth. It's, it, it's a, what we refer to as a logical fallacy. So when you're having... There is some logic. Well, there is logic, but it's a logical and it's false logic. It's a logical fallacy. And it's the logical fallacy of the natural argument saying natural is good. And just natural is not always good? Well, just because it's natural doesn't mean it's good for you. Just okay. because it's natural doesn't mean it's healthy for you. I don't think people would argue that cyanide mm -hmm. is good for you. But it's natural. But cyanide is natural. Uranium-235, natural, not good for you. Not so much. I don't think anybody would argue that, you know what, I don't want my child immunized against meningitis. I just want them to develop natural immunity to the meningitis. Really? You really want your child yeah. to be exposed to the wild strain of meningitis? That's why we immunize. Mm -hmm. It's one of the few things we've done in medicine mm -hmm. that has made a huge impact. And, and I can count the big things on one hand. Mm -hmm. Clean water. If you have clean drinking water, clean communities, healthy communities. If you have good sewage systems, you can take away your waste. Mm -hmm. Good, healthy communities. And one of those top three things is immunization, preventing disease and illness. Right up Why, there with clean water and sewage. It's one of the wow. few things we've done in the last couple hundred years that have had a huge impact on healthy lifestyle, healthy communities, and longevity. Mm -hmm. And 
the, the whole sort of, I want to have the natural strain of chicken pox. You don't see people arguing about that too often. I want to have the natural strain of meningitis. Not a lot of, I, I'd like to get the natural strain of the mumps. Most people would say, you know what, if you can prevent disease and illness with a poke to the, you know, sign me up. Because mm -hmm. I I, who wants to get sick? Who really wants to get sick? And who would like their loved one to get sick? So I encourage everybody to get immunized if, it, if it's appropriate and if they're not allergic to it, get immunized. It's not unnatural. In fact, actually, the whole, the whole story of immunization started with cowpox. I don't know if you know that, but cowpox. And okay. they took cowpox, which was very similar to chickenpox, mm -hmm. and took the natural substance from a cow's pox. This is, this is going up to a rural community, so I think it's important. They took the pus, the, the, the material out of a cowpox and would inject people with it because they noticed that milkmaids, milkmaids mm -hmm. were the ones that milked the cows, were exposed to cowpox, and when chickenpox came through, everybody else got sick, but who didn't? The milkmaids. Hmm. Interesting. And so a famous doctor said, well, maybe there's something to this. And so they took the fluid, the pus, the containing of the vesicle mm -hmm. from the cow and scraped it, in other words gave a shot, mm -hmm. exposed people to that cowpox and that cowpox had cross immunity to the chickenpox. And that's wow. why milkmaids didn't get chickenpox as often and that's how we started one of the you know great success stories in medicine which is vaccination. So just because it's natural doesn't it always mean, mean good, so that's a logical fallacy. Okay. And I would rather prevent disease and illness. And you know, the, the vaccine's made in eggs. You know, so, mm -hmm. I mean, there's some natural, natural component if that go. makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. But just because it's natural doesn't make it good. Just because it is a synthetic product or something doesn't make it bad. What makes things good or bad are whether it works. And we know immunization we know works. We know the flu shot works. So, natural fallacy, myth busted. Myth busted. Okay, Dr. Milne, thank you very much for taking the time to be here with us today. I know I'm definitely going to get the <laughs> flu shot this year. There's no excuses for me. And uh, well, I think it's well worth my time. I, I, I mean, I'm an emergency doctor, mm -hmm. and often I'm standing at the bottom of the cliff going, waiting for people to fall off the cliff and go, <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, boom, they're I'd sick. I'd rather save them from I'd falling. I'd rather go, step away from the cliff, move back, move back and prevent disease and illness because it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources and it's much harder to put people together who have fallen off the cliff mm -hmm. than to say, you know what, it's dangerous this close to the cliff, take a step back. And I think you've given us a lot of tools, a lot of good reasons that we should be getting the flu shot. You've definitely busted a lot of myths <laughs> for us today, you should maybe audition for that show and... Mythbusters, well we're the medical mythbusters. The medical myth. So where can people go to get the flu shot? Well, this year we have a lot of different options for getting the flu shot. We have two clinics here at South Huron Hospital. We also have one at the Grand Bend Community Health Centre. We have a number of other ones throughout the county. And if anybody has any questions, we have those available online at the Huron County Health Unit's website. Um, they can also give them a call. So there's no excuses not to get the flu shot. It's available everywhere. And I know I'm definitely going to get the flu shot. Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> She'll have to talk to me again. But I think that's great, and I think you're doing a great job. Grand Bend, a great job here, and a great job for the community. And if we can prevent disease and illness before it happens, I think we've done a much better job than treating illness. I, I, would, think so I would rather keep people healthy. Keep them healthy in the first place. And so people may know that South Huron Hospital is known as the little hospital that does. Well, we're also known as the little hospital that does. Get, Get the, flu the flu shot. shot.